What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the show. Thank you for joining me. I'm glad you're here yet again. Um, if you'll remember in my what's in my camera bag for 2020 video, I said that I wasn't going to upgrade my camera, that I was happy with my Nikon D810, that I wasn't going to be doing any changing this year probably. Um, but what we didn't talk about is what I'm shooting for video, which at the time was this Canon uh, EOS M5, which I've absolutely loved, but I've upgraded. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why I'm switching out my cameras, what I've switched to, and uh, what we can look forward to in the future. So yeah, welcome to the show, and here we go. All right, so first things first, let's talk about this M5 for a second, why I chose it. This was the first camera that I had bought specifically for video, and it was for a few reasons. It was for YouTube. This is late 2017, so I've been using it since I started YouTube. And uh, the reason I chose this camera specifically was that it had this flip down screen. And the cool thing about a flip down screen with a screen underneath the lens is that when you're actually looking at yourself in the screen, which is kind of what you wanna do when you're framing up images and uh, you know, trying to get the right angle and whatever, is that when you're looking down into the screen, when the screen is below the lens, it actually looks like you're looking straight into the lens. Now this new camera that I've got, the screen flips up, which is fine, except watch this. I'm looking at the lens right now, but if I actually look at myself in the screen, I'm looking over the lens and you can tell that I'm not making eye contact with you. And so that's why for a starter camera, this was an amazing thing to do. Now the big problem with this and the big complaint that I saw all over the internet was, that the tripod hole is right there in the middle. So when you flip that screen down, if you flip the screen down, if you stick a tripod there, in fact, let me grab this little monopod, if that's plugged in, you can't see yourself. And that was everyone's complaint. And I thought, well, why don't we just move that hole? So I went to Home Depot, I spent six bucks on this little piece of aluminum here. I cut it to the bottom of the, uh, cut it to the bottom of the camera, put an old tripod screw on it, and basically created a new hole so that when I screw in the, uh, the tripod here to the side, I'll show you, give me a minute. There I was, did you see that? I just looked at myself over the top of the, uh, over the top of the camera. Okay, so now it's off to the side. So when I flip the screen down, I could see myself perfectly. And that worked great. And everywhere I went, that's what I did. And it was, it was perfect. And so I feel like this, uh, this camera has done me pretty well. The problems with this camera though are it doesn't handle low light very well and so often in the photography videos that we do it's at sunrise or sunset when the light is really low and even though I've been using this little pancake prime 22 millimeter 1.2 lens which should do really well in low light because it's a really big aperture the camera just can't handle it. The sensor can't handle it. Whatever For whatever reason this camera just doesn't do that well in low light and I'm sure if you watched any of my older stuff you've noticed that when the light is low there's just a lot of noise and, and whatever. So that's one reason this camera, it's time to move on because I feel like I've gotten to the point now where that's really starting to bother me, where what I want to do is limited by the equipment that I have. And you'll remember in my, in my gear video that I talked about, are you good enough to need a new camera? And I feel like I've reached that point where now I'm being limited by the equipment, which is why it was time to, to upgrade. But I've loved this little camera. It's going on to a new home to a friend who is just starting a channel. And uh, I think this is gonna be great for them. Still a great camera, and I think for regular 1080p HD kind of stuff in good light, it's still a great camera, it's still a great choice. If you're starting on YouTube, I think it's still a really good camera. And that flip down screen for that one limitation, if you build yourself a little mod for it, it's still a great camera. So now I've got to switch this. I've got to... I'm on the new camera, I'm shooting 4K, and I'm gonna to have to switch to this to show you what I bought. So prepare for the image quality to take a dump right now, but this is what we're gonna to have to do for a minute. So here we go, let's take a look at the M5 now. I've switched cameras so that I can show you the new, uh, the new equipment. Really excited about this. This is the Canon M6 Mark II. It's uh, 4K, does a lot better in low light, and I am combining it with Sigma's new uh, trio of primes. This is the 16 millimeter 1.4, which puts out a, just a beautiful lens. It's super great in low light, and I think this combination is going to be is going to be really good for the videos on the channel. It's going to take a lot less uh, less time to work through these, and, uh, and definitely a lot less frustration dealing with grain and noise and low light and uh, and all of that. So I'm super excited about this. Now the challenge, just like the M5 had that flippy down screen that I had to relocate the, uh, the tripod mount for, this camera actually uh, has a flip up screen, which is 
also fine. But the problem with the flip up screen is that number one, if you're looking at yourself in the screen, you can tell you're looking over the top of the camera. It doesn't look like you're making eye contact with the lens, which is obviously off-putting from a viewing standpoint. So I'm gonna have to get very used to looking straight into the lens and not gawking at myself in the screen, which has become a little bit of a handicap if I'm being honest. Um, but the problem with the flip up screen is that that's where the cold shoe mount for the microphone goes. <laughs> so I have bought two different small rig uh, relocation tools for, uh, for that. The first one goes into the hot shoe and actually just relocates it over here. But now it's over the top of the dials and when I put my microphone on there, there's that big fluffy mess at the front and uh, it gets in the way of all the dials. So I'm not sure that I'm gonna be using that very often. So the second one that I bought is this, uh, this one that mounts right into the, uh, the bracket in the bottom and it's got a side and a bottom cold shoe and it really isn't in the way other than just being a little annoying on the hands when I'm holding the camera. I think that's probably what I, uh, what I end up sticking with. And uh, yeah, so that's the new camera. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm excited to start making videos and being excited about it again. And, uh, and start enjoying the editing process. I felt like with uh, with the old camera, things were just getting a little too, I could definitely tell that I was, my eye was getting better than my camera was. And I feel like anytime that happens, you have to look at that and go, is it holding me back? And is it, am I losing my enthusiasm for doing this because the tools are below the standard that I wanna set? Like I said, that camera's still amazing for daylight stuff and anything where the light is very good, but I had to go out and actually buy a set of lights so that I could film inside because just filming in regular room light, the files were a disaster. So let's switch back to this because, uh, because I, I wanna shoot in 4K, <laughs> I wanna shoot in 4K, so. Oh, how much nicer is that? More pixels, better darks and blacks and less noisy. It's not very bright in here, actually. I've got two little lights on and they're not very powerful and uh, I would qualify this as still pretty dark and I'm just super happy with the way that this image is looking. I've been pulling pulling stuff off to the uh, to the computer as I've as I've been filming here and comparing what we just shot with this to to the new uh, to the new footage is just night and day and I, I couldn't be happier. So Canon M6, you know I'm not a, uh, a B-roll guy. That's not, uh, it's not my happy place, but I kind of feel like we need to do a little B-roll with this camera just to kind of see what it can do. We'll go out and explore. We're gonna go out on the boat and do some sailing later with a friend, so I'll bring that along. I don't think I have a, uh, an ND filter for this, so maybe that'll work and maybe it won't, but stick around, here we go. So it's pretty bright out here. Um, I do have an ND filter on, but if I get it too dark, I get these weird X's through the middle, which is really weird. And I can't stop looking at myself over the top of the uh, over the top of the monitor. Actually, now I'm getting a reflection right inside the uh, right inside the oh dolphin right here. So, so far, boat trip is going very well. I still have to keep remembering to look into the lens because I keep looking over the top into that screen, which is very unnerving, because I know that if I'm looking over like this, if I'm looking at myself, it looks like I'm looking past you, which isn't good, and you're not gonna enjoy that, and when I edit it, I'm not going to enjoy it, and I probably will just throw those clips out. So, gonna keep practicing looking in the lens. And we're still sailing.
All right, so that was a successful first day out with the camera. Um, I do wish on the boat that I would have brought a gimbal because the uh, the boat was bobbing around so much that holding a steady shot for any B-roll was next to impossible, so a gimbal would have helped with that. The in-body stabilization did do a great job when there wasn't that much movement, and if I was just holding the camera in front of me or trying to do tight things where, where the boat wasn't rocking too much, it was really, really good. There is a slight crop when I do that, which doesn't really bother me that much. I think maybe if I'm vlogging with it and I've got the camera close to me, that's gonna make a little bit of a difference, but I think maybe just putting it on a little uh, bendy tripod or something will will sort that out. Um, the other things I really liked, I think the 4K quality out of this camera is really, really beautiful, so I'm excited to have that on my side now and and feel that that raising the level of, of the video feel that that I'm getting out of the uh, out of the camera. The other thing that I'm really enjoying is the eye autofocus, and I think I brought that up in the beginning. It really locks onto the eye and does a really great job of following it. The one downside to that, though, and the thing that I didn't expect or didn't know, was that when the eye autofocus is actually engaged, the level in the camera doesn't work. Um, it shuts that off, and I'm not sure what the conflict is there, but uh, a lot of times when I'm setting up on a tripod, I wanna make sure my horizon is level, and I actually have to switch to a different focus mode to get that level to come up, which is which is annoying, but obviously not a, not a deal breaker. The other things I wish the camera had that it doesn't have are higher frame rates in 4K. It does 4K 30, but nothing higher. So if I wanna do any slow motion 4K 6, or, uh, 60 frames a second or anything higher, and this will do full HD at 120, which is great. And the up of those video files does look really good. So I don't think that's a, a deal breaker for me because I really just don't do that much slow-mo or B-roll. Um, so I don't think I'll miss that, but every once in a while, like on the boat, I kind of wish that I'd had a had a 4K opportunity to do some slow-mo. Um, and the only really other thing that I found as a limitation or that's kind of annoyed me is that when I have the screen flipped up and I'm looking at it, uh, aside from that I shouldn't be looking at it while I'm talking to you, but if I'm making adjustments on the touch screen, if I even bend that screen back away from its full vertical position at all, it flips the image upside down as if I was trying to look at it from the back. And that's really annoying because there are actually icons along the bottom that are really hard to touch unless you just move it back just a little bit. So I'm gonna have to get used to that, but all little limitations I'm happy to live with for the better image quality and uh, and all of that. The one thing I am really excited about is I took some photos while we were out on the boat just testing out the photo capabilities and I've actually gotten really excited about what this camera might be able to do as a second photo camera, especially as a walk around town travel kind of camera or if we're doing a long hike and I don't wanna bring the full big heavy Nikon setup, that this might actually be a viable secondary solution to still get really high quality images out of. So if you wanna see a full review on any of that, leave me a comment in the comment section below and I'll do something a little bit more in depth and kind of dig into some of those utilitarian aspects of the camera and what I do and don't like. Uh, otherwise, I think that's it for us. New camera, I'm excited about that. I'm excited to get out and start shooting videos again. So. Thank you for sticking around if you stuck around this long. If you haven't subscribed, please do so if you enjoyed this. Uh, like, comment, do all that YouTube stuff that helps, uh, helps the channel. I really appreciate it. And uh, till next time, I'll see ya.